All right, thank you. And uh, thank you again for including me in this important panel. I say hello to everybody. And let me start by saying that since October 8, 2023, almost one year ago, Israel has been conducting a destructive war on the Gaza Strip that has been described as a genocide, war crimes. In fact, it looks like a genocide. It sounds like a genocide. It is developing like a genocide. Then it is a real genocide. When most of the infrastructure of the strip is destroyed, including houses, schools, hospitals, government buildings, and more than 41,000 Palestinians have been killed, most of them being civilians, then it is definitely a genocide. When Netanyahu started uh, the war on Gaza, he announced two goals the destruction of Hamas and the liberation of the hostages. Then the carnage, the ethnic cleansing, and the genocide started under the false claim of defending Israel and finding uh, and uh, fighting a terrorist. After failing to achieve any of his objectives in Gaza, Netanyahu turns towards the West Bank, where his army, the West Bank, where his army supported the settlers in their attacks against the Palestinians, chasing them out of their homes and destroying their crops and olive trees. Soon afterwards, he sent his army north towards the border with Lebanon, announcing a new goal for his war, the return of 60,000 Israelis to their homes in the, nor in the north, returning 60,000 Israelis by uh, displacing more than a million Lebanese, and this is uh, his equation. In order to achieve that, he declared that he needs to push Hezbollah away from the border and to the north of the Litani River. In the last 11 months, Hezbollah's support of Hamas in bombarding some military targets in northern Israel, no Israeli civilians have been killed. Hezbollah fully respected what was called the rules of engagement. During that time, Israel was conducting airstrikes and bombardments of Hezbollah fighters, targeting them in their homes throughout Lebanon with total disregard for civilians. Israel also destroyed homes and killed at least 600 people, including numerous uh, women and children, all of that before mid-August. Then Netanyahu started his savage campaign against Lebanon with exploding the booby trap pagers and walkie-talkies used by Hezbollah, which killed numerous people and wounded thousands, including innocent bystanders who lost their eyesight or limbs. This was followed by air raids on numerous areas of Lebanon, destroying buildings and structures that the IDF pretended were occupied by Hezbollah fighters. What Israel is doing in Lebanon resembles to a large extent to what they did and are still doing in Gaza. The ethnic cleansing and the genocide perpetrated by Israel in Gaza prompted the South African Republic to bring the case to the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court. Numerous countries joined South Africa in this case. The ICC judges are now studying the request of Prosecutor Karim Khan to issue an arrest warrant against Netanyahu and his war minister, Yoav Gallant, as well as some Hamas leaders. In trying to face these legal issues, Israel has lobbied the American Congress to put pressure on the international court to dismiss the case, arguing that Israel is not a member of any of these two international courts. But despite Israel's obstructing numerous initiatives for a ceasefire, they're ignoring every request by the United States to open the borders for humanitarian aid to enter the Gaza uh, Strip. Biden and his administration kept sending arms and money to Israel. The question that comes to mind is, why isn't the international community stopping this genocide and ethnic cleansing? And why, and why does the United States keep sending arms and money to this rogue state that has completely ignored US pleas? It is worth mentioning the double standards of the Western countries led by the United States. With Israel's devastating attacks on Gaza and Lebanon, we heard many mild statements calling on the parties to reach a ceasefire and to stop fighting, but not a single clear condemnation of Israel of this act, despite the huge number of civilians killed and the widespread destruction. However, when 
uh, Iran attacked Israel without killing a single person and merely causing limited damage, the condemnations from Western countries were loud and clear, including some direct threats to Iran by the United States. Let us now talk briefly about the international community and then the United States. First, the international community, quickly. The countries of the global south support the Palestinians and do not approve of what Israel is doing, doing, but they have no influence on Netanyahu to pressure him to stop his attacks on Gaza and Lebanon. On the other side, the Western countries outside the United States have made statements calling for a ceasefire and ending the war. Some of them, like Spain and Ireland, have even recognized the Palestinian state. Other Western, Western countries, like the UK, have put an embargo on selling some types of weapons to Israel, but this is absolutely not su sufficient to deter Netanyahu. Remains the United Nations. In the Security Council, the American veto has prevented any resolution forcing Israel to stop the war from seeing the light. In the General Assembly, a resolution calling on Israel to end its unlawful presence in the occupied Palestinian territory was adopted. However, this resolution, which was adopted by an overwhelming majority, is not binding. In fact, everybody knows that only the U.S. can stop Israel. So I have a lot more to say, but I will stop here.